Most Colorado state prisons are operating very near their capacity level. Zane Matthews published this February 6, 2023. How many inmates are there in Colorado prisons? How many inmates are there in Colorado prisons? Is this mix 104.3 today's best mix? Maybe, maybe not. So according to a report from the CDOC, Colorado Department of Corrections, the DOC, at the end of January, there were only 867 vacant beds in Colorado state prisons. How many people are in Colorado prisons? The Colorado Department of Corrections has 19 state-run prisons and two private facilities, and they are all nearly full, not counting county jails. Colorado's state prison capacity was 16,332, and at the end of January, with only... 1,203 vacancies, 19 state-run prisons, two private facilities. They're all nearly full, but they're not counting county jails. There's 64 counties. So how many people are in these county jails? You only have, what, about 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 capacity? But that could be, you know, if it's 100, that's, that could be another 6,000, another six to 7,000 people in jail. So if we want the whole number, we're going to have to count the county jail figures. Where do you get those figures at? I don't even know where he got all these. Additionally, more than 3,000 inmates are housed in four federal prisons in Colorado and two federal prison camps. So the total prison population in Colorado is over $20,000. Which Colorado prison has the most prisoners? Colorado's largest prison is the Sterling Correctional Facility in the northeast corner of the state. The facility currently houses 2,053 prisoners with only 19 vacant beds available. What? Only 19 vacant beds? You know, what's super fucked up is that they're businesses, right? So they got to operate at capacity, 93% of total capacity. And they're making it seem like there's not enough room. Oh my God. If only a thousand more people do some crimes, you're not, you're going to have to build more prisons and you don't have enough room. How many of those are nonviolent fucking, how many of those are innocent? How many of that is just fucking the system fucking over political prisoners? Only 19 vacant beds available. So 20,000 of the people of Colorado, out of all the people in Colorado, you got 6 million people in Colorado. For some reason, 20,000 were taking care of them. Three hots and a cot, giving them, you know, some of them extra protection. Some of those get, um, who are the people in the Colorado State Prisons? More than... 14,000 Colorado prisoners are men, and over 1,000 women are currently incarcerated. So mostly men, over 1,000, 1,100, are women by race. 41% are Caucasian. Uh Uh-oh. Caucasia. What kind of crap is Caucasia sending us? We need to send those Caucasians back to where they came. Go back to the Caucasian, the Caucasus Mountains. Go back to the Caucasus Mountains, you Caucasians, you. 41%, so most of the damn prisoners are Caucasian. Most of the people that either are victims of the system or are perpetrators. I guess we'll just do 50-50. So half of them are getting screwed by the system and the other half are criminal sons of bitches. So you criminal Caucasians... What the hell? 30% are Hispanic, 17% are African American, 3% are Native American, 1% are Asian. Now that's disproportionate, isn't it? 30% Hispanic, 17% African American, 3% Native American, 1% Asian. I guess that's actually, is that proportional? That might be proportional. By age, 34% of prisoners are between the ages of 30 and 39. A total of 24% are between the ages of 40 and 49. And 20% are between the ages of 20 and 29. What's going on? So most of the people over 30% are between 30 and 39, 24% are 40 and 49, 20% are between 20 and 29. Hey, 
Stop! Hey, quit! I'm trying to do a thing here. No! Are you gonna leave me alone? Will you gotta go outside or something? Let him chew the bone. You weren't doing nothing with the bone, you're just keeping it for yourself. Simon and Luvetti. Well, it seems like Colorado has a lot of prisons to dogs. The number is small compared to many states. Texas has the most prisons in the country with 313 facilities housing. So get up close. Let's see. Check out the 19. You got Delta Correctional Center. You have Rifle Correctional Center. Buena Vista Correctional Center. Florence Street View. Florence Centennial Correctional Facility. Florence Skyline Correctional Facility. Florence Four Mile Correctional Facility. Damn, Florence has all the damn prisons. Buena Vista, Florence. They're gonna send you the Buena they're gonna send you the rifle. To work with uh, Lauren Bobert at her restaurant, that'd be fun. I'd I'd do that. You know, do they serve good burgers there? What what kind of food do they serve? Just a slice of freedom. Just a slice of constitutional freedom. If you make a decent pizza, I'm okay with that. Florence, 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 Buena Vista. Women's Prison in Canyon City, Colorado Territorial Correctional Facility. What? Canyon City is home to not only the popular prison museum, but fully functional prisons as well. What? <laughs> Come here to the prison museum. Yes, sir. You had the first prison here. and I guess there is a history to prisons, huh? To prison plantation. The prison. Arkansas Valley Correctional. It's east of Pueblo, Colorado. Arkansas Valley Correctional. Street View. Arkansas. Trinidad. Gonna send you to Trinidad. Don't you ever say that. Well, got a good job in the house. I don't give a damn. It's a good career. I don't care. Lyman, I'm going to send you to Lyman. There's a correctional center in Lyman. Inglewood, Ingle, Inglewood. South side, where you from? Inglewood, Ingle. There's a correctional, federal correction. Let's see, Denver Women's. So, anything else to report? ADX, Florence, aka Supermax. A peek inside of what these notorious criminals go through in their daily lives. So, somebody gets three hots in a cot. You know, they have a picture here of El Chapo. We got El Chapo here? You know, when I hear about the gangs coming out of Guatemala and Mexico, that Cineola group, they were just drug dealers. They were not breaking crimes. They weren't breaking people's kneecaps. They weren't pushing... Old women down on the street, they weren't terrorizing the police in the neighborhood. So the Cineola gang is actually, they're just drug. They just were dealing drugs, which in a free market society, shouldn't commerce be free? And then you know who the number one purchaser of all the fucking illegal narcotics south of the border are? 50 nifty United States. 12 notorious criminals locked up in it. Do I want to click on that? Yeah, all right, I'll click on it. Just because I'm curious. I thought they sent El Chapo out east somewhere. That son of a bitch knows how to tunnel out of prisons. He should just get a helicopter. I mean, that'd be... So notorious prisons. You got Alcatraz, Folsom Prison, Rikers Island, Canyon City and Pueblo, Supermax. 
filled terrorists, domestic and foreign murderers, gang leaders, mafia, bosses, whatever you can imagine, holds most of these criminals in solitary confinement for 23 hours a day. They're all in solitary confinement, you know? Like, man, other people are fucking annoying as shit. That sounds nice and peaceful. Supermax prison that notorious criminals, no matter where their crimes are committed, a lot of interesting purse people, diverse diverse population are eventually sent if the crime warrants extreme security let's see here 12 notorious here he goes ted kaczynski oh shit what's up we got ted kaczynski here you know who else we got el chapo that's right he's here you know who else the fucking boston B marathon bomber that cesar nave does a uh, hokar de Sar nave terry nichols oh shit that's a uh, goddamn motherfucking Timothy McVeigh fame. Terry Nichols and Timothy McVeigh. Oh, shit. They fucking killed his buddy. And he was, you know, an accomplice. So I guess he's just going to be life. Boston Marathon Bomber. El Chapo. Ted Kaczynski. The Unabomber. The Unabomber. He was sending bombs by mail to various recipients. <laughs> From out of Montana. How come the postal, you know, master didn't. How come you're just kind of sending these. And everywhere you send them, I mean, it, why is this box ticking? It looks weird. And then with the way he looks like, you didn't think nothing was up, huh? There, Postmaster General. I just asked if they could deliver a damn package to me. No, the federal government doesn't deliver packages. You guys don't really read the Constitution, do you? You don't really know the... Man, I respect the hell of the Postal fucking Service. How come you don't respect the mail must go through... Oh, through sleet, snow. Oh, the mail must go through. Terry Nichols, number two. No. Just listed twice. Abu Hamza Al Mazri, an Egyptian, moved to Afghanistan, began a life of extremist terrorism. He not only lost his hands and one of his eyes. He was caught in 2015. He was charged with 11 terrorism charges. What'd he do? <laughs> An Egyptian moved to Afghanistan. Extremist terror. So he's a political prisoner from the Afghanistan war. The We lost the Afghanistan war. So I feel like... Um, 11 terrorism. Okay. James Marcello. Lil Jimmy. James Marcello was a mafia crime boss that's responsible for 14 murders. Lil Jimmy. What, what's Lil Jimmy up to, huh? Besides uh, not shaving his goddamn fucking mustache, you gross motherfucker. Some of these assholes are like ironic hipsters, right? They're just like... But they have nice trim beards. Nice, crisp, clean, trim beards. Tyler Bingham is known as the leader of the notorious prison gang. Known as the Aryan Brotherhood. Wow, he looks like a fucking Bingham douche. Oh, Bingham douche. Aryan Brotherhood. A blood-in, blood-out policy. That means that to enter the gang, you must kill someone, and the only way to leave the gang is to die. Wow, great fucking job, Nazi fucks. Fucking Nazi fucks and the goddamn KKK Confederate pieces of shit. It's interesting to compare some of these white nationalist groups to some of the other notorious gangs that are out there, too. Are any of the gangs integrated? Because it seems like a lot of the gangs, there's, if it's not policy, it looks like there's predominantly, like even the, they say the Hell's Angels is just a motorcycle club, but it's predominantly Caucasian. But I guess they accept others, but it's predominantly Caucasian. So it seems like it's a, so Aryan Brotherhood, is, see, and you must kill someone in order to get in. I've heard that from some other gangs too. <laughs> One of the Hell's Angels? I thought the Hell's Angels was like that. I don't know. There was some gang that says that not just kill somebody, but you had to kill somebody that was important. So there's, you know, MS-13, Cineola. When I think about Cineola compared to MS-13, I'd rather have Cineola gang members than Three Kings. And I mean, you don't want any gang members. You'd rather have the police and the government doing their damn jobs, right? Good police, good government, good laws. And if there are gangs that's starting up in the neighborhood, they just kind of nip that shit right in the bud and reach out to them. But you can't let that fucking 
uh, toxic fucking poison spread. And then the apostasy too. So that's just like Islam. Islam, the only way you can leave is if, you know, they they execute you, right? That's that's like their policy. The only way to leave the gang. No, once you're in, you're in forever. It's like uh, you guys, you you all made it weird. It started out okay, but then you guys got it. You got creepy. You made it real creepy. Robert Hansen is a Russian spy. Was given 15 life sentences for his crimes. Robert Hansen, a Russian spy. How come he wasn't released? I feel like this. You could just go ahead and let the, when that other fucking guy. Like, wait, where, what the fuck did he do? What that guy do? Eric Rudolph is known as a racist and a bigot. And he orchestrated five bombings at places like abortion clinics, gay bars, and the 1996 Olympic Games. Eric Rudolph. I thought it was that one fucking guy. I thought they pinned it on the one guy that, like, saved everybody. He is currently... Yeah, isn't that something? He saved everybody, and then they shit on him. Johnny Hurley saved everybody, and the cops killed him. Didn't even get, I don't think, a slap on the wrist, a ticket. Didn't get in any trouble. It's kind of crazy. Cops are supposed to stop the crimes, but a lot of times, they're the biggest criminals out here. If you want to stop crimes, then why would we allow the cops to commit crimes? That doesn't make any sense at all. He's serving four life sentences. Did people die in, what was the abortion clinics, gay bars, and the Olympic game? What's he protesting? The Olympics? Feats of strength? How dare you throw a shot put fucking, how dare you run and jump and throw things really far and fast, you, you asshole? No, you're an asshole. Simon Trinidad, no photo available. Bank robbery, kidnapping, drug trafficking. 60-year sentence, man. He must have had a bad lawyer because out of all these other guys, these, some of these guys just don't even really seem like, I mean, kidnapping, okay, drug trafficking, eh, bank robbery. Did he hurt people? It seems like, I mean, was there an assault or blood or injury of any kind or sort? Simon Trinidad. Then you have R Richard McNair. He was once an Air Force sergeant, but he committed many crimes, including burglary, and then he shot and killed two people. And then when he was incarcerated, he was able to escape from prison three times, but then he was able to be put into a prison that, as of today, nobody can escape. Colorado Supermax. Robert McNair. No siree, Bob. I mean, he keeps on trying to... No siree, Boob. No siree, Bobbit. Remember that guy? Lorena. Lorena Bobbit. At least Richard McNair wasn't no Lorena Bobbitt, an Air Force sergeant. He's also a veteran in burglary. What is he, poor? Michael Swango, once a physician, had an unusual amount of patients that died under his care. Then it says he was orchestrating the deaths and has been accountable for his sadistic nature. It's kind of like uh, Donald Harvey. Donald Harvey is a serial killer out of Kentucky. He was a nurse at a hospital. That's how Dexter began, actually. The father was saying, you could see how those people are psychos. So, being able to 